Welcome to Prog Rock Digital. Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Prog Rock Digital. This is episode two of season two. Today we're chatting with special guest George Coleus from the band Nile. Thank you for tuning in, downloading and streaming from wherever you get your podcasts. This is Nicholas Georgiakopoulos. Enjoy the show. The man behind some of the most iconic pieces of art connected to some of the biggest names in rock, Ioannis. Originally from Athens, Greece, in the last 36 years has created over 300 record covers for such clients as King Crimson, Fate's Warning, Uriah Heap, Allman Brothers, Blue Oyster Cult, Leonard Skinner, Ingve Malmsteen, Deep Purple, Styx, just to name a few. Be sure to connect with Ioannis at www.dangerousage.com. George Coleus, welcome to Prog Rock Digital. How's it going, man? Uh, it's going well. Uh, nice to be here. Um, and uh, I just finished lessons. It was a really busy day today. So, yeah, all good. So tell me, how are things in Greece at the moment uh, from a entertainment or a you know uh, musical perspective? Um, I don't remember worse days, to be honest. Um, although... To be fair, I don't belong in the Greek scene because I'm not working here anymore. Um, not even clinics or anything, uh, bands. I mean, I have my, my trio, obviously, uh, Royal Time Machine, which is my second band aside from Nile. Um, and uh, we're finishing touches of our debut album right now. Uh, we're very excited. But, man, there is no room for us here to, uh, you know, to perform. So we're going to look, you know, go... I don't know, for shows in Europe or something. Um, but with COVID, everything is closed. Like, musicians don't work. Um, for me, not much change because, you know, I'm in the studio all day. Um, you know, the usual stuff, sessions, you know, practicing, all this stuff. Mm. You've touched on the fact that you're a teacher. How did you get into teaching and, and why? What was the main motivation? Um, I got into teaching, like, uh, around two... 2000, I think it was uh, the year 2000. Um, I just want to share stuff, you know, and uh, I wanted to help fellow drummers. Uh, that's where it begins. It, it doesn't begin like, okay, I'm going to make money by teaching music. That comes like way later. It's like playing music or, um, you know, the drum clinics and everything. Like money comes always like very late. But uh, I always enjoyed like uh, being in a drum community, help drummers, you know. Then I got into a school in uh, Corinthos, where I grew up. And uh, then I moved to Athens. I work for uh, Lab Music Education, which is uh, by far the biggest school in Greece. I also work in uh, Modern Music School in uh, Germany and the US. And uh, I released two educational DVDs, two drum books. So, you know, at the end of the day, you gotta have the passion to share what you have. Otherwise, if you, if you shoot for something like a, a product, you're gonna fail, uh, a guarantee. So, George, uh, a lot of my listeners are probably scratching their heads asking, why is George Coleus on the Prog Rock Digital podcast? And, you know, obviously, Nile has, you know, some, some progressive elements to it and, and some very, you know, progressive concepts. A lot of people probably don't know this, but your drumming encaptures or encapsulates, if you like, um, you know, some, some progressive thinking and and concepts uh, yep. and yet you can sit there and and, and play mm -hmm. a drum beat at you know 250 260 beats per minute can you just run through some of your thinking yep. some of the way you go about uh, if you like uh, laying down these drum tracks um, well first let me tell you that uh, Nile is not a regular death metal band we don't play 4-4 four, four blast beats and double bass and shoot for like BPMs, like high BPMs and be like, okay, we're now we're brutal. Um, it's, it's way far from these. Like so far, like I have no words to describe it. It's, it's not even close. Anyways, 
there's a lot of uh, old time signatures in Nile. Um, you will meet like sevens and elevens, eleven eights, eleven fours, uh, uh, nineteen sixteens, seventeen sixteens. We had the thirteen sixteens, and then of course uh, some. You know, we create some illusions in there. For example, you, if you play thirteen and you divide it like six, six and one, you get some kind of feel. And then if you go four, four, four and one, it changes everything. Although the reef is 13, 16, the, drum, the drummer goes nuts or vice versa. Uh, then of course you can make three groups of three plus one, you know, all this stuff. So <clears throat> there's a lot of times we do some math in the rehearsal room with Niall. But uh, what I really love with Niall is like, every member is like very uh, skilled, you know, musician, but Everybody practices and, you know, they want to push it farther, you know. Uh, but we never forget the main reason we start playing music, which is write a damn song. Like, write a song. Write something that people will get some hook. Um, there's, uh, like, there's harmony, like every, everything. So I would say Niall is very prog, very prog. But um, that has to do with uh, our passion to learn the instruments, uh, our instruments. Uh, and uh, evolve, you know, as musicians and then, of course, as a band. Now, I know that you've studied jazz drumming to a certain degree. Would you say there are parallels with jazz drumming and extreme metal drumming? Are there any similarities or, you know, connections in any way? None. (laughs) There's no similarities. I mean, um, in a way, it helps me to understand music better, okay? So, for example, um, if you play if you play rock music, okay, you gotta you gotta meet the band on the one. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, boom, one, okay. So there's a lot of that in rock music and metal, especially metal. You know, um, if you play jazz, then the crash is gonna be on the four. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, psss, you know. Uh, if you play, uh, for example, reggae, you know, the the one is in a different position as well. So all I'm trying to say, like, the more you research different genres, you know, I think the better effect it has for your, uh, for, you know, on you as a player. Um, now, similarities, I mean, you know, uh, both underground <laughs> music styles and they don't play well. That's, that's a similarity. Uh, I think the more you push and the more skilled you are and the more you push to the extreme side, uh, either that's jazz or funk or classical music, whatever, you know, the less money, it's, it's less popular. So in a way it makes sense, but the joy you get becoming the best and, you know, trying to become the best and push and push, you know, I think it's priceless. You make your drumming seem so seamless, effortless, so smooth, so, you know, definitely the, there must be a demand on, you know, the physical side of things. How about the mental side of things? Um, yeah, very demanding in uh, both areas. Um, if you, for example, I don't remember playing an aisle show and uh, not hurt myself, like not feel pain or get a headache because, you know, I have to do a lot of math while we play. Uh, I have a click truck running, I have samples, but I have to connect with my band and the crowd as well. So I'm like, it's, it's, like, you, uh, it's like you're an actor and somebody's in your ear tells you what to do all the time, which is, you know, it doesn't let you act so well, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good uh, way to describe it. But uh, I don't know. All together, it's uh, yeah. That. So George, you joined Nile in two thousand and four. You would have been, you know, in your yep. mid twenties. What are some of your highlights, or what what are some of the highlights of, of being in the band that you can um, you know chat about and you know at least yep. make our listeners aware. Uh, the 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 best one, the most important thing uh, was that uh, when I joined Nile, Nile was like more underground, and uh, with Annihilation of the Wicked, which is the first album we did together well, with me, uh, we had the opportunity to to shoot for a you know a better label and stuff, and you know, and we did. We went to Clear Blast, so that opened many doors for us as a band, and uh, we did it together with uh, Annihilation of the Wicked. Other than that, you know, I think uh, every album and every tour is a, is a highlight because, you know, we, we've been around the world so many times. Um, 
around the world, like I mean everywhere, just everywhere. Uh, the first Australian tour was one of the best I, I ever remember, you know, uh, because we went together for the first time. They never went before I joined the band. So, yeah, I, I think it's, it's, it's very, very important, you know, to, to grow together. It's like it's been like 17 years or so, you know, so, yeah, I don't know. So many great moments and bad moments as well, you know, nothing is easy. It was bad moments all the time, but uh, we managed to, you know, go away from everything and uh, keep going. We're really strong. The latest album we have is, uh, for me, is the, the best highlight, is the best album we ever did. I, I, and I'm seriously mean that. I'm not selling our new album, okay? Um, Drum-wise or, you know, composing-wise, like everything is like uh, at the, the top. So... I'm, I'm very, very proud for the, especially for the last album, but everything we did in the past as well. Yeah, look, I was, and, and interesting you say that, I was going to say, you know, the, the production on the most recent album is just stellar, you know, just up there. Yeah, we, we went with Mark Lewis, who's, uh, you know, he's new to us, but, you know, he's already a legend, you know, he's uh, amazing. And I think he killed it, man. It's, this is the first album I can, I can hear my drums, uh, it was so smooth to work with him. Although we tracked drums in Greece, you know, uh, I was calling Mark and be like, "Hey, man, you know what do you want?" He was so cool. Like, "Yeah, man, sounds great. Be yourself. Just you know, do whatever you want, and uh, then I'll take it from there." And uh, yeah, he delivered by far. I'm very happy. Now you've you've got a lot of fans in Australia. I know you've been here on you know drum clinic, drum festival obligations. How was it, um, you know, coming to Australia? You would have knocked a lot of people for six, as they say, which is, you know, just spun a lot of people out with, with your playing and, and your process. Um, yeah, how does, how does Australia stand out for you? And, you know, what are your thoughts on, on Australia? Uh, it's always a, a very special place, Australia. Uh, I have many friends there. Um, the crowd is killer, you know, like people are really, really nice. Uh, I love the country in general. So uh, some legendary drummers, of course, there. Um, and um, yeah, it was killer. I, I saw a lot of uh, interest, you know, in the clinic thing and some master classes we did. Uh, we did a drum camp as well there. Like, oh, no, not one. We did three. Um, the Australian's Ultimate, Ultimate Drummers Weekend in Melbourne was uh, probably one of my favorite moments because it was massive, you know, like a show like... Uh, I don't know, like 1,500 people or something and some of the best drummers. So, yeah, I mean, you, you got a lot of uh, people interested in uh, clinics and, uh, you know, mus musicians uh, as a unit, you know. And, you know, it's it, it's interesting you say that because I, th I think because Australia is so geographically disconnected from the rest of the world, when it comes to drum clinics, drum festivals, live situations, and, you know, we have musicians yep. from you know, Europe or the US, we tend to run, you know, it's yep. almost like an obligation for us to see these people. Yep. So now let's talk about uh, Royal Time Machine. This is your Prog Fusion project. Did you find that you had to hold back yep. and, and, if you like, pull back on, on your playing? Obviously, you know, th this isn't a death metal or extreme metal project. Um, you know, you're not playing every single 64th note. Was it a, a different every approach what? to the way that you record and play this style? Uh, obviously, yep. you're used to, and yep. we're used to hearing you playing, you know, extreme metal. Well, you're not you're not pulling back. I mean, the approach is way different. You know, I have to, for example, like uh, we we don't really have simple grooves. Like there, there's something going on the back, like you know, like uh, uh, making it a little bit more busy. But uh, my my um, my goal for this band, uh, which now it's a band, it's a complete band. We have uh, we recorded an album. I'm very happy. Um, was to have a band. That I'll be playing with a small kit. <laughs> that was that was a, the first approach uh, with a single kick, for example. Which uh, that dream went away when I added the second kick drum, but it's not it's not on the left. It, both are for the right foot. So there's like a 22 inch uh, bass drum, you know, for like grooves and all this stuff. But uh, if you want to play like a like a more like a Latin feel, like pattern or a, a swing in some uh, areas. 
Uh, then I moved to the 18 inch kick drum. So basically I have two kick drums for my right foot and I switch back and forth. And uh, then I added the second snare. I added, uh, so yeah, it's getting, keeps growing, but, but I want to keep it as simple as possible. <clears throat> and I found uh, Yanis Papadopoulos. He's a guitar player from Greece. He's actually a neighbor. He lives like uh, two minutes away from me. But um, he plays for Scott Stapp from Crete, you know, in the States. So traveling a lot. He's uh, the lead guitar player there, you know. So Yanis is like a world-class guitar player. And we had this plan for like, let's say, a year and a half. But we couldn't find a bass player. And then we got uh, Michael Evdemon, which is insane, man. He's, uh, this guy is like a, a jazz player. Uh, a jazz bass player, and uh, I'm an extreme metal drummer, and Yanis is like a shredder, you know, like a guitar player shred on the on the on the shred area, you know. So the results are amazing. Everybody writes music for this band. Like uh, I wrote two songs, uh, Yanis wrote four songs, and Michael three songs. Uh, so everybody brings ideas on the table, and then we take it from there. We rehearse in my studio here, right uh, where we speak right now, and. Uh, we change stuff like it's a it's a hundred percent teamwork, and I think the results uh, are gonna surprise people. But yeah, it's definitely not holding back. It's actually pushing more. Uh, I had to study a lot of uh, fusion, a lot. I'm I'm saying a lot, like uh, maybe a couple hours before I record every day when I was recording the album, just to get into the mood hundred percent. So yeah, speed wise, I'm yeah I'm not pushing, but uh, everything else is uh, very busy. So in terms of a release, in terms of, uh, you know, availability, is it going to be released through a, a label or is it going to be a self-financed project? Um, yeah, how do we get our hands on it? Um, I don't know. Uh, the plan is to find a label, which is, is that, I don't think it's going to be hard because uh, the band is really good. I, I believe in the band, you know, otherwise I'll be like, okay, whatever, we record something and we'll give it for free, you know. Um, to be honest, we've... What's going on with the labels right now? I would prefer that either way, just to give the music away and have everybody listen to the music and uh, uh, follow the band and, you know, whatever. But uh, uh, everybody else has to agree with me. So <laughs> I think, I think we, we will probably go with the label, probably. We will see. Maybe we'll release it ourselves. I don't know. But uh, right now we have, like, we're doing touches. Like, we're changing, like, a, a bass line, which uh, Michael came up with something more interesting. Actually, today I just got a, a message. He sent me an MP3 to listen to some ideas. And uh, I think Yanis has to do a, a, a last solo or something, and uh, then we're done with the album. Then we're mixing, of course. Now, you've also got the, uh, the Brass Project, which uh, has yeah. very funky brass, if you like, elements to it, uh, you know, definitely not rock, not metal. How important is it having an eclectic ear? Um, are you, you talk about the songs in there? Yeah, look, uh, oh, yeah, you know, generally speaking, you know, from what I'm hearing, it's it's very yep. left field from from what we're used to. <laughs> and I've said this many times during this interview, but I think it's very important. You yep. seem to grasp different elements of music. Well, my funk education is not very rich you know so i don't really know what i'm doing like i i mean i wasn't shooting for something but uh i i know very important people some of the best musicians in the world in musicians in the world that they listen to songs and they're like dude this is this is really killer you know and so i i know and my ears also know that uh it's it's something at least okay or good so that's Again, it's it's a personal challenge. I wanna I wanna do this for me. I write all the music. I play most of the instruments. Uh, there's a lot of MIDI. Uh, there's a lot of music production. We call it right. So there's a lot of uh, some loops that you have to chop and create what you want, or a lot of uh, sax saxophones or like a MIDI's, and you play them as a keyboard. You know. So yeah, there's it's it's a personal thing. I don't think it's gonna be released from any label. Probably it's gonna be a giveaway or something. Uh, not not sure yet, but uh, it's it's like my metal project, which I I want to have control of everything. George, I'm glad you touched on that. Um, with regards to your solo you know, metal project, obviously you released back in 2015 Invictus. Uh, what are your plans now moving forward for your second release? And well, will there be a second release? And when? 
Yes, actually, I'm writing it uh, right now as we speak. Um, uh, I have uh, about four songs, three, three, four songs, I would say, but lots of riffs and stuff. And uh, yeah, the plan is uh, at the end of uh, you know February to to have the, the composition part you know ready. But anyways, this is a project which I I wanted to do all by myself. Uh, I only got friends of mine playing the guitar solos. I only played two guitar solos there, which they're not good. <laughs> I can't play solos, you know, guitar, but I can riff them like crazy, you know, no problem. So uh, mainly I, I play more years, uh, I spend more years in guitar than drums, but, you know, not that dedicated, of course. But anyways, I got friends playing the solos. Uh, that's where some fans got confused and thought I had, like, different guests playing the guitars, but I did play the guitars. This is a. This is not an ego thing. This is this is a, supposed to be a fun project, okay? Like, uh, let's see what I can do. That's it. And I love the fact that you know I, I, would, I will sit down and write music. I really, really enjoy it. And um, I never did it for Nile before the last album. But you know, the last album I made, it, I made, um, I wrote the song there too. I mean, the guitars, you know. So I never thought actually my songs were like that good for Nile. So. I just released a project for fun, but eventually went like uh, much better than we expected. So there you go. And we go with, uh, I, say, I say we, but it's not we. I'm going with the second one, you know, which uh, I really enjoy writing music. That's it. Well, that was our chat with George Coleus from the band Nile. If you haven't seen George in action, be sure to visit YouTube. Type in George Coleus, K-O-L-L-I-A-S. And, well, you're going to see an extraordinary drummer. Now, what he does with his feet, his footwork, um, a lot of drummers can't do with their hands. So a lot of respect for George. Great guy. Really enjoyed the interview. Until next time, be sure to visit www.progrockdigital.com and stay safe.